There are 10,000 high, high school teams in America playing the oldest and fastest growing sport in the USA, the Native American game of lacrosse. A game Here's Bart to Fine. replace war. There are 10,000 high school teams school teams in America playing the oldest and fastest growing sport in the USA, the Native American game of lacrosse, a game invented to replace war, a game known as Little War in the Mohawk language, inspiring the movie's title of Sport of War in the spring of 2012. Cross, probably because it's a mixture of the sports that are that I like the most. I love hockey, I love basketball, I love football. Uh, and when you mix them all together, I, I get lacrosse. You get like the contacts of hockey. You also get some contact that's similar to uh, football, but not usually. And I just love basketball. I love the ball movement. I love like the beauty of the game of like a backdoor cut or like a give and go. That's just like great to watch in any sport. Everyone plays so different. Throws different. Everyone catches different. Everyone has their own playing style, like what they're good at, and like I really, I really like that because I feel like, like Brendan said earlier, in other sports such as football, like it's kind of it's more like no, like do it this way, but in lacrosse it's it's much more like do whatever you work. So, I mean like I know the kids on our team, but like look at Joey Sankey, he's like one of the top attackmen in our class, and how tall is he? Like, five, 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 five. But like the kid can flat out play, and like. Whatever gets it done, and I, I really love that. So like I think the fact that we had so much depth kind of helped us in the second half because teams would come out like gun for us and everyone would like be all out and adrenaline and everything. But then like once things got settled down, like Carl said, like everyone would start to get tired in the second half on other teams, but we still had all our depth. So everyone was like fresh, and that's when we kind of just killed teams in the third and fourth quarter. state tournament and in 2005 we won it and now as a coach we're not a part of it at all. No. A couple just philosophical things for lacrosse. How many guys play more sports than just lacrosse? That's great. All right, because as you guys get older, you want to... Oh, so uh... Getting ahead. All right, you got to get better on your own. So you can do that out of season, right? If you
thousand high school teams in America playing the oldest and fastest growing sport in the USA, the Native American game lacrosse, a game invented to replace war, a game known as Little War in the Mohawk language, inspiring the movie's title, Sport of War. Finally, a film has been made not only about this remarkable sport of poetic finesse and paradoxical fierce violence. This documentary, directed by T. Patrick Murray, the award-winning director of The Last Game from ESPN, Murray chose to personify this pastime of passion and historical pacifism by profiling the number one ranked high school team in America. The film follows them for their incredible 2011 season where they sought their first national championship. Coached by John Nostrum, the recently honored coach of the year and his able assistants, the Fords from the Haverford School in Philadelphia are a team not simply deep with athletic talent, but unique in the breadth of ethnic and economic diversity, the brotherhood bond of friendship within the team that is blind to athletic ability. What appeared to be a sport for boarding school elites played by white trust fund brats has been shattered as a stereotype as lacrosse or lax is proven to be not just the sport of the past, but inevitably the most popular sport of the future. In the story of the 2011 season of the Haverford School, who must play the number two and number nine nationally ranked teams in the toughest schedule in the nation and win 23 straight games to retain the coveted number one spot on the ESPN ranking system, well, some stories, like this one-in-a-million tale of what Nostrand's players achieved, must simply be seen to believed. Watch the trailers at thelaxmovie.com and look for Sport of War in the spring of 2012 by Independent Film Studios and T. Patrick Murray. Sport of War, the true story of the number one lacrosse team in America. McCallion comes up with the scratchy ground ball, and Haverford gets it going. First quarter action. Name, nickname, number, oh, position. Oh yeah, we got it. All right, it's all right. Let's just start with CK. All right, all right. All right, and three, and two, and one, and you can look for me. Right. Uh, Connor Kelly. Everyone calls me CK. Uh, number eight. I play goalie. I'm going to Notre Dame. Joe McCallion. Uh, plethora of nicknames. Wait. Number three. And uh, Matt Walters, uh, I play midfield. Um, Matt Walters, um, number seven, I'm a midi, and I'm going to Syracuse. Um, Chris Huffelt, I'm attackman, I'm number 22, and everyone calls me Huff. And I'm going to Penn. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Walters, I'm a midfielder, I'm number seven, and I'm going to Syracuse. <laughs> and action. I'm Joe McCallion, I'm number three, I'm a midfielder, I have a ton of nicknames, and I'm going to University of Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. uh, Connor Kelly, um, number eight. Everyone calls me CK. I'm a goalie. I'm going to Notre Dame. Carl yeah. Wara, number nine, attack. I'm going to Virginia. I'm Moore Bailey. Everyone calls me Bruce L. I'm number five. I play defense. I'm going to Georgetown. Mm -hmm. Brendan McGrath. I go by Huff. Number 11. I'm a midfielder. I'm going to Princeton. It's how fast you're hitting that thing. And now I'm going to come and get a shot. The thing, the it's stuck over. And all right, I'll just do five, four, which I, you know, how, I don't know how he knows that, but he knows, and he's. That's really thing like rough cut, you know, like oh. It's almost like you could be a goalie if you. Yeah, somewhat. Not like you throw hard. Three. Games, you know what I mean. I mean, you, you have a you have a limited amount of. Do a little bit right after that. Let's. Um, you guys accomplished something nobody else has ever done. Certainly at Haverford, and uh, I read my quote in the paper today, and, and I stand by it. We were tough, and we were unselfish, and guys didn't care about themselves. And in, a, in sport, that's the most important thing. Okay, and you guys go home and you sit around the dinner table, you, you know, your parents are like, well, how come you didn't, how come you were not man up, or how come you didn't play, you know, whatever. You guys put all that stuff aside and did what you needed to do. And we were 23-0 and the best team in the country. And in my mind, 
probably the best lacrosse team ever to play the game since they started doing all this stuff. We played hard, we made plays when we needed to make plays, and then at the end, when we, you know, when we, we did what we did, we had one guy stand out the side of the huddle, I'll, I'll remember this forever, and it was Carl, he's like, just don't panic. Just, hey, everyone, don't don't worry about anything. And in his own mind, for the first time, and I've been telling him for years, I'm like, dude, why don't you just, why don't you just play so hard that when you walk off the field, everyone's like, who is that guy? And he did it a lot, but he really did it that night. And in his own way, he's like, don't panic, don't panic. And really, what are you saying to all you guys? He's like, get the fuck out of my way and give me the ball. <laughs> and he scored two goals within 40 seconds. And it was awesome. So the senior leadership this year was unbelievable. So you guys have the world in front of you, the young guys, older guys. Get it done. Don't forget your base. Don't forget what Coach Loving and Coach Patron, Coach Marcel, and uh, Coach O'Grady taught you. Because the bottom line is, if you work hard, nobody can take that away from you. Um, and, and my wife, she said to me all summer, it's over when I say it's over. Why wouldn't we be the number one team in the country? Why won't we do it again next year? We have the talent, we have the farm system, we have people coming in. Tonight's a celebration of everybody. We got Scudder, how the hell did he get into Lehigh? How did Chris Ryan transfer from Pitt to Lehigh? Anna's lease at St. Joe's, Scranton, Liam, Notre Dame. Anytime Notre Dame recruits our guys, they're all Jewish. All right, Liam's the first Catholic guy they recruited, so he went. And that cup right there, T, I'm going to get that cup. And I'm going to say that this thing is the culmination in a lot of very good shape of a lot of hard work. God bless you guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> and no one will ever be able to take that away from you. So you guys do all your stuff. You do Under Armour, you do the Under 19, and guys don't make it. Well, guess what? People don't, they don't like people that are good. They don't like people that are successful. So Philly is one of the best regions in the country this year. We have five guys try out, nobody makes a team. How many Long Island guys made it? Ten. Are you shitting me? No one will ever be able to take away what we did as a school, as a team. You know, I don't know how you guys did it. I don't know how you got through Wilson Hall. How you got through Garnet Valley and the, whenever that was, the Bailey Brothers and Matt Walters. Okay. <laughs> but we did. I guess they'll never ref for me again. I think the refs were a complete joke. Yeah. So, uh... And Hereford gets it going, first quarter action. This is Sam Rohr, the little left-handed midfielder. Splits the D, comes in shot, and it swings oh, its way Sam in, Roar. Sammy Rohr. Assisted. Haverford again in their commemorative blue jerseys. Inside shot, goal. Carl Walrath to Henry and Blinn. Henry Blinn, because they, Haverford is winning face This is a demonstration Hup, 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 it's gonna have way. My goodness, Hub! My goodness! And Haverford has it now. Good time to dodge and transition. Hub Hub felt working the left side. Inside Hup, shot and a goal! Hold your nose, because here goes the cold water. Joe McCallion again with a face-off win. Darian going with their third face-off guy, Luke Fraker. Shot and a goal. Joe McCallion. Walters up top, moving across. This is a demonstration of foot That is Brent Tomlinson. Shot feeds it inside. And Gavin McBride. Oh, sting me a corner, will ya? Holy Moses. Brendan McGrath slinging it. Ball comes out. Britain can't corral it. Inside move. Goal. Nice play. Zach Haverford Lego. schools. Shot. Goal. Brendan McGrath. We play St. Paul's every year, first year of the game, and it's always like a good, uh, a good way to start out because if you get like a nice win, uh, you know, it's a big game, and you know, it's just a good, good way to test to see like where you guys, where, where our team is in the beginning of the season. So I think that's always a, a good part, a good way to start the season. And this year we were down at halftime, and uh, I think they they uh, ended up scoring. It was 10-8. We were up by two after we came back in like the third quarter, and uh, 
then they ended up scoring with not much time left, and it was 10-9, and we had to win the face-off, or at least tie them off until time ran out, and we ended up doing that for like a tight win. Yeah, they were, they were probably one of the best teams we faced offensively. I just remember like going down the bus, just sitting next to Warner, and um, just thinking about the game, like all the hype uh, going into the game, like us being number one, like all the magazines and stuff, and then uh, like having to go out there and prove it for the first time, just as a team, like was huge. And like uh, we started off, like everybody was real nervous, and uh, like we had turnovers and stuff, but that was uh, like we knew that was gonna come, but and we never really panicked. And like at halftime, we were down, and um, I don't know, just with our team, we just found a way to win it. This is a demonstration of flip for Matt. This is a demonstration of flip for me. This is a demonstration of flip for Matt. This is a demonstration of flip for me. This is a demonstration of flip for Matt. 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 This 
is a demonstration of flip for men. This is a demonstration of flip for men. This is a demonstration of flip for men. This is a demonstration of flip for men. St. Paul is definitely one of the best teams we played this year. I think they're underrated because they might have lost some games in the MIA, but I definitely think they're one of the top teams we played. This is Sam Roar, the little left-handed midfielder. Splits the D, comes in shot, and it squeaks Goal. its Sammy way in. Roar. Sammy Roar. Assisted. Up. Haverford again in their commemorative blue jerseys. Inside shot. Goal. Carl Walrath to Henry and Blinn. Henry Blinn. My goodness, Hup. 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 My goodness. Hup Hupfeld working the left side. Inside Hup. shot and a goal. Hold your nose, because here goes the cold water. Joe McCallion again with a face-off win. Breaker, shot and a Joe goal. McCallion, Joe McCallion. Again, and Walters up top. Brent Tomlinson, yes. shot goal. feeds it inside. And Gavin Brent McBride. Tomlinson. Oh, sting goal. me a corner, will you? Holy Moses. Brendan McGrath slinging it. This is Sam Roar, the little left-handed midfielder. Splits the D, comes in shot, and it squeaks oh, its way Sam in. Roar. Sammy Roar. And in their commemorative blue jerseys. Inside shot, goal. Carl Walrath to Henry and Blinn. Henry Blinn, welcome to Philadelphia. My goodness, it's like an Ivy League team out here. Haverford is winning faceoffs. Hub Hubfeld's going to have his way. Oh, my goodness, Hub. 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 My goodness. And Haverford has it now. Good time to dodge and transition. Hub Hubfeld 
working the left side. Holds her nose because here goes the cold water. 117 mark. Second. Inside move, shot and a goal. Zach Rago, goal. Zach Rago with the play by Luke Fraker. Shot and a Joe goal. McCallion, Joe McCallion. Goal. Again, Walters up top, moving it across. That is Brent Tomlinson. Yes. Shot oh. feeds it inside. And Gavin Tomlinson. McBride. Oh, sting oh. me a corner, will you? Yes. Holy Moses. Brendan McGrath. This is a demonstration of flip for Matt. It. This is Brandon Hathaway guarding Hupfelt. Anticipate an early slide. There it is. Great feed inside. Oh, Hup Hupfelt. Brendan McGrath. Strip delicious. Ball comes out. Britain can't corral it. Inside move. Goal. Nice play. Haverford School. Zach Rigo. 30 seconds left in the game. This is Sam Roar, the little left-handed midfielder. Splits the D, comes in shot, and it squeaks oh, its Sam way in. Roar. Sammy Roar. Assisted. Up. Haverford again in their commemorative blue jerseys. Inside shot, goal. Carl Walrath to Henry and Blinn. Henry Blinn. Because they, Haverford is winning face This is a demonstration. Hup, Hup, going to have way. My goodness, Hup. My goodness. And Haverford has it now. Good time to dodge and transition. Hup Hupfelt working the left side. Inside Hup, shot and a goal. Holds her nose because here goes the cold water. Joe McCallion again with a faceoff win. Darian going with their third faceoff guy, Luke Fraker. Shot and a Joe goal. McCallion, Joe McCallion goal. coming. All right, here we go. And again, and Walters up top, moving this it across. This is a demonstration of That is Matt. Brent Tomlinson. Yes. Good shot goal. feeds it inside. And Gavin McBride. Oh, sting oh. me a corner, will you? Yeah. Holy Moses. Brendan McGrath. Slinging it. Ball comes out. Britain can't corral it. Inside move. Oh. Goal. Nice play, Zach Haverford Rago. School. Ball comes out, Britain can't corral it. Inside move. Goal. Nice play, Zach Haverford Rago. School. Shot. Goal, Brendan McGrath. Brendan and Connor and um, Matt, Joe, like the kids like, even Carl, I guess Brendan, everyone here except me, basically that came came uh, came here from 
uh, came here for high school just because like um, I felt like they they came here because they, they they knew about Harvard like the history of like Harvard lacrosse and like they want to become part of it too like kind of like it's a big deal. Sure. I mean, did you? Am I right or no? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. Just like Harvard in general, like especially me, like growing up at Harvard, uh, like attending schools in junior kindergarten, I really grew up with the program, and I I know like so many um, the cross players that went there, like I know like the history, so like like actually stepping in freshman year, like with everyone else, like you really become one of like those players that they like, used to look up to. And I think we really experienced that after the game, like we knew we accomplished that, like when little kids came up to us like asking for autographs, and like that was awesome. We really wanted to be like. Like what the kids talked about. Like I remember when I was growing up. Like you always used to watch like um, John Hawley, Kyle Warren, like Peter Cannon, Brendan Cannon, like Foster Gilbert, like all those guys. And, like it was just like awesome. Like finally, because then like once we actually won, like, I felt like we like we had like accomplished that as well. Freshman year, Coach Nostrand had you know the whole like future of the program and everyone who's going to try out that year. And he told us, he, he said, you know, raise your hand if you won a state championship. And only one person raised their hand. It was Pete Bohr, and uh, you know he's like, raise your hand if you've ever been ranked nationally. And like only two people raised their hand. He was like, you know, raise your hand if you've done anything for this program yet. And like, you know, only again two people raised their hand. So you know, after we won this championship, and you know, after we we were named national champions, you know, I really feel like we earned our spot as like a half for lacrosse, you know, alums. And, you know, I really feel like, you know, we, not that we wouldn't have been a part of, like, you know, the great Hafford lacrosse tradition, but uh, that really, like, capped it all off, you know. I, I was like, I mean, all of us, you know, we once we did that, you know, that made us part of the greats that played at Hafford. I remember freshman year, uh, I went into Coach Prince's office, and I think it was after we had lost to LaSalle and, like, you know, like, heartbreaking, you know, one of the greatest games I've ever played, and we ended up losing in overtime, and uh, he told me, you know, uh, you know, you guys have a really good class, and, you know, senior year, you could be the number one ranked team in the nation, and, you know, I remember that since then, and that's really... He said that freshman year? Yeah, he really? told me that freshman year, and, uh, you know, I swear to that, he told me, you know, you guys will, you guys have a chance to be the number one ranked team in the nation, you know, you know, this, the team is, you know, he was talking to our class, and, uh, you know, we had a lot of good guys, and a lot of guys were going to get playing time sophomore year, and he pretty much told me, you know, like, your class, you know, you guys have to step up now, you know, this is going to become your team in the next few years, you know, referring to our class, and uh, I think, you know, people really started to step up and working hard, and uh, it's been in the back of my mind ever since, you know, winning and finishing the season is number one, you know, it's it's uh, it's pretty, pretty unbelievable, you know, how our coaches, you know, saw that potential in us, and uh, they really believed in us. Talking to each other about like what we could do seeing if, if we just keep working and like to actually do it, it's awesome like it's, it's like it's so ridiculous yeah like I'm yeah, yeah like I honestly like remember like talking like yeah like we could do like if we keep working like we could do this if we could do that like we could be ranked number one like how cool it would be like we're, like we're good enough like we gotta get everyone to stay like I don't know it's like oh like we're ranked in the, in the preseason number one like Right. That's awesome. Like, who gives a fuck? But like I said in the trailer, staying number one's harder than being yeah, number one. Yeah, I mean, like, I really, I didn't, I didn't care about the ranking at all until it was, it was over. Because like, no one remembers you for what like you did in the game. Like, the only stuff people remember is what you did last. Uh, our sophomore year, I remember like Gilman, which is a school in Maryland, yeah. and LaSalle have like really high teams and a lot of D1 recruits, and they kind of, I don't want to say they choked, but they didn't really like reach their expectations and. I just kind of had that in the back of my mind the whole season and didn't want, just to, didn't want to like think about it too much and like put ourselves on like a, on a pedestal when it, if we didn't really step up to our expectations and what we really potentially could do. Oh, get on that, oh.
Oh, you can like. Like, also, uh, there wasn't much drop off. Like, there are a ton of seniors that like didn't really get to see as much time as they probably wanted to. But in that game, especially, I, I think like everyone got to play. Like all the seniors that game, and like, th like probably like the last in the fourth quarter. Like the great thing about having so many guys, like you can really rely on, is like everyone gets, you know, like when, when everyone's out there, you, you, you like pretty much trust everyone playing. Like, I mean, we had a backup goalie going to Dartmouth, and we had a bunch of solid defensemen. Like, I don't know, just like defensively, like I know my brother and like Garmin, like when they get the opportunity to play, like I completely trust them. Like Scott Warren, like a bunch of those guys, and when they like go and you, you know, you, you know there's not a lot of drop off, is like what, what Vince was saying. Mm -hmm. Carl Warath, number nine, play attack. Should have I should have should have asked you guys where you're going to college, uh, but yeah, whatever. We're 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 we were twins separated at birth. <laughs> and you know, guys, we're going to talk because you didn't say your like he's going to say his name, but CK is all the way over here. Yeah. So maybe, maybe maybe we were all one step ahead of the law. That's okay, because when push came to shove, we did it the right way. Because. Um, like obviously we have like enough talent to beat them. It was just like damn, like now we gotta do it like with alcohol because he's always been there, um, like playing. Like he's been playing as a freshman. So like, so I think like um, like kids stepped up. Like Carl said, Brent stepped up. Like the defense stepped up. Gave us a lot of possession at the end. And Gavin McBride stepped up because it was me, him, and Rego. And because um, Gavin like played, he played like a good amount, but he didn't have that. Um, his like role increased when Carl got okay. Out. So like I think that was like a really big, big time for the team when that happened. <laughs> like 58 seconds left, they had the ball, you know, it just didn't seem right, like, you know, like, this isn't supposed to happen, like, I can't, I can't even believe it, like, you know, I seriously, it was like, you know, I just couldn't, couldn't believe what was happening, and, uh, you know, Carl came up big, had a nice goal, and it was just another face-off, and, uh, it's a part of the face-off, which is the draw, and then, you know, there's a ground ball, which it squirted out, he, he got it, uh, put it behind him, and, you know, I was just like, you know, like, I'm getting the ball, like, and, uh, you know, I thought he got it first, but I went to check it, check uh, his stick, so the ball came out, uh, that happened, then it went the other way, and, you know, I just wanted, I mean, I think if anyone else was in my situation, my position, they would have done the same thing, you know. Just fight for the ball, and, and you know whoever wants it more is gonna get. When I was a freshman sophomore, I hung around Danny Legrazer because he was our goalie, and he was great at stopping the ball. But like, one one of his downfalls in in high school was he wasn't like an awesome clearing goalie and didn't really totally take control of defense. Don't get me wrong, he was an awesome goalie, but I think that the difference between him and CK is like CK will like he'll tell you where you're supposed to be at all times. Like if you're the hot guy, he'll tell you exactly where you're supposed to slide, and then I'm clear, so call your name. He's throwing you the ball, so it's just like. He helps you like kind of slow down the game a little bit in your head when you're on defense, and then clearing wise, I, I don't think I've ever been around a better clearing goalie. I think Hub's a great player, but one of my, my favorite parts about like, his style and his and his game, what he does is like when he rides the ball. You know, I know that when the defense has the ball and they're trying to clear, you know, I know that if he's on my attack line, you know, he's gonna give everything he can to ride the ball back, and we take a lot of pride in that. You know, a few times we meet with. Like the attack, you know, me, Hup, Rego, and Gavin, we would say, you know, we want to ride the ball so hard next game, and we we want to be known for, you know, you know, going all out on the ride and, you know, making plays on the ride and doing whatever we can to help our team, and, and riding is a big part of the game. I think Hup, you know, does a great job in that. Hup, we've probably gotten, like, like 500 arguments, me and Hup, as, like, friends. Like, he will never give up, and he, whatever he feels like, and this is, it's a good thing, too, because, like, whatever he feels like, he think he, he feels like is right, and he's going to fight for it, like, I guard him every day in practice, and I know that, like, he will never give up, especially when, like, I pick up the ball, like, 
off the end line, we're trying to clear. I know I'm getting the heck the fuck out of my arms. Like, I know Hup's coming, like, riding me. And, like, he'll never give up. And he also uses, like, he's the, probably one of the strongest players on the field that we have on this team. Like, like there's guys that may be, like, stronger off the field. Like, he's definitely one of the strongest, like, on the field. Like, he will use his body. Like, he will put his body, like, in harm's way, definitely. Like, I remember, like, against LaSalle, like, two years ago when he, like, laid it, like, got hit in the crease. Like, he will, like, he'll, he'll do anything to put the ball in the back of that. I think that's what makes him, like, so good. I've I've lot I've watched a lot of lacrosse games and you know I've never really seen an attackman who gets as m many ground balls as Huff does. Uh, you know if there's a 50-50 ground ball, Huff's coming up with it. You know every every coach that's ever coached him is confident with that. Every player that's played with him is confident with that. And uh, you know like like uh, Warner said, Huff's like a scrappy guy. I mean he's getting that ground ball and you know there'll be a six foot four, two hundred fifty pound guy guarding him and Huff. We'll try and run him over, and you know if he doesn't, he'll dive and score. You know, he'll do whatever it takes. Uh, I remember uh, Huff just got a pistol. Right? Like, Dude, like, is he dead? <laughs> he's not getting up from this. Yeah, some one thing with Huff is just how competitive he is. And it's not just lacrosse. It's uh, pick up basketball. It's, it's video these games. games yeah. yeah, it's he's not gonna stop until he wins. And uh, like if he loses to his brother in video games, <laughs> he will keep playing him until he wins. And just like that type of mentality, he brought it to the cross field and practice every day, like riding people back, like Warner just slashing defenders. Like bro, a little payback for the some of the punishment he takes, but just how competitive he is just makes him a great player. I think the EA game. It's probably like one of our worst games we played together as a team. It was probably like one of our biggest moments because, um, like, losing Carl whenever I forget when exactly he got kicked out, but Carl's been like the best player in the year for the mm -hmm. past two years. So losing, obviously, this like this team is very talented, but like losing your best best overall player for, like for the past two years was like, a, and um, was like something really big to overcome. Carl and I've been playing together since like eighth grade. Um, before like a lot of these kids got here and it was always like me and him on attack and um, since I've been playing with him he's always been like an unbelievable attack and like he's he can always beat his guy get to the cage he's always has uh, his head up which is like it's so nice playing with like an awesome attackman because like when you're playing with someone that can get you the ball like it just makes you that much better and like because the best the best um, the best of you really comes out like because he's like so good to beat his guy and like it allows me to like play my game and get get open and finish and like same with Rega like just like it just makes everyone better when like someone's like that. We definitely have our styles. Carl likes to take his guy from X a lot. I like doing that too, but like he he dodges a lot more than I do okay. um, in games. But um, as far as like actual like beating his man, like he's probably he's like definitely one of the best players. But still, I practice looking for more power more leverage, more force, more speed. Did I say I shoot 111 miles per hour? Like, you look back, you look at the guys on the sideline, you look at the guys on the field, you look at your coach, you're like, we, we got this. Like, you know, we, we've been put in position of adversity before, and this is not, a, like, abnormal, but not to that extent. Like, that, the way that game was played was so different than any other game that we've been down, because we were... We, I mean, we were down until 32 seconds left, obviously, like, and then mm -hmm. we tied it up. But it was just, we played the whole game. I feel like, like, we talk about this a lot, like, all year, uh, like, afraid to make mistakes, kind of like, like, afraid to lose. And that's, we, we tried, we got away from that a little bit in the beginning. And I felt like, even in Lawrenceville a little bit, I felt like, like, myself, talking for myself, like, trying to, like, prevent myself from making mistakes, cause, like, to screw up something that would have been so great, that is so great. It, it just would have been, you know, a little, uh, I mean, I guess like I guess we played it differently. And that was the first time I thought that we could have actually lost a game all year. Run the shit out of it. I mean, okay. uh, Brennan McGrath, I'm number eleven, and I play midfield. I'm Warner Bailey, uh, number five, and I play defense. If I, if I was in their shoes, you know, I would want to beat the number one team. Uh, we actually got to do that freshman year. We beat uh, Loyola, who's the number one team. Like it's an amazing feeling. And anytime you play, you know, a really good team, especially a team ranked higher than you, 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 uh, you get up for the game, and they're gonna be excited. So. I think early on, uh, you know, everyone's uh, adrenaline's pumping, and you know, the the emotions of the game kind of take over. Eventually, the game starts to like flatten out, and uh, you know, it's more involved in like coaching and uh, actually playing the game. But a lot of the first half of the games just you know really upbeat, and there's turnovers, and it's kind of hectic because everyone's so amped up. How many lines did you guys play? Whether it was middies, I mean, I know tax usually it's not really lines, but do you guys do anything unconventional? Do you guys use more people than normal teams did? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Tell me about yeah. that a little bit. Yeah, because he's got he needs money. Like, he's head coaching job. It's a lot more money. Like 
I would yeah. like. I, I didn't like the. Every time we get on offense, you know, we just couldn't get a goal. And I remember looking down, because uh, I was attacked, so I had to sit, you know, at the midfield line. And I could see the clock, you know, I'd look up, and there's 10 minutes left, and our defense is still playing, you know, they make a save, and I'm like, okay, you know, you know, we still got time, you know, we don't score, then it was like eight minutes left, you know, we didn't, I still, still got time, all the way down to, you know, it took about like two or three minutes left, We and then we get the ball back, and then, you know, I still thought we had time. And then the only time I felt panic, which was, like Warner said, uh, so after St. Joe's and over time, this is probably the first time all year I actually felt like a little panicked and a little nervous that, you know, this one might slip away. But, uh, you know, I remember them throwing a pass and uh, I saw Gorn right there and, you know, I just ran up and, you know, we, we ended up jumping that kid and uh, getting the ball back. And, uh, like I said, after that, you know, I, I wanted to go and it was like, a, you know, we still have time. And once we got the ball back, I felt like a relief. But, you know, that little... 10 second period there is probably like the worst 10 seconds of the season for me because that's when I really thought, you know, uh oh, like we need to go like right now. Right? Also, this is what I'm saying. That's the biggest issue. Like, if you have a family and you have, I know he has, I think he has two or three kids. Yeah. yeah, why would I be a, um, you know, a volunteer assistant at a high school coach and get paid this much money when I can be the head coach at Malvern and I can support my family and I can, um, like, Make more money. Yeah. Like, and he was also for the head of Princeton for, yeah, job. Yeah, only there for one year. So it wouldn't be like if Coach Patron yeah. left. Right. So he's been there for like eight or nine years. And really, really nice. close to the program. And then he left from Alvern. It's like a one year yeah. thing. And he left, I think he left for money. And okay. Then, and he has two or three kids. Time, like if you're in his, his position, you have all that knowledge. Like, are you not going to use it?